In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise be to Allah, God Almighty, Lord and Cherisher of the world. And may God send His peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who rightly follow him until the Day of Judgment. Amen. Should Muslims condemn terrorism? Should Muslims condemn terrorism? What do we mean? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry has his own definition of what terrorism means. Even the American Dictionary, decade after decade, they changed the definition of terrorism. If the sun is the sun, how can you change the definition of what the sun is? You know the sun, the sun that's above the skies, S-U-N, sun. The sun is the sun. We cannot keep redefining the definition of what the sun is. A star in, in the space is a star in space. We cannot keep redefining what a star is. A star is a, a star. Uh, an asteroid is an asteroid. So, uh, white is white, black is black, gray is gray, yellow is yellow. Uh, winter is winter, summer is summer. But when it comes to the word terrorism, America has a very unique uh, deceit. Every decade, they change the meaning, the definition of the word terrorism in their own dictionaries. Who came up with this? How can you change the definition of a word decade after decade after decade just to suit your own vested interest and your own uh, time and circumstances? Is the definition of terrorism uh, to wipe out people? No, that's not terrorism meaning the definition of it. Islam gives a unique definition to strike fear into the hearts of the enemy. To strike fear into the hearts of the enemy. Who's the enemy? Let me ask you. Who would you consider an enemy? Someone walking in the street minding their own business? Or someone who's about to attack you? Someone who's planning to attack you? Someone who's working with others to attack you. Who would you consider the enemy? You would say, the one who's about to attack me. So when Allah says in chapter 5, I believe, to strike fear into the hearts of the enemy, He's not talking about striking fear into the hearts of the woman and the children and the suckling and the handicapped and the senile. And someone who's about to die of a heart attack due to being that old in age? No. He's talking about those who pose a physical threat among the opposition. So, there's two types of uh, enemies. There's two types of enemies. There's the enemy who's a non-combatant. He's a non-combatant. He's still the enemy, but because he's not non-combatant, we are not allowed to touch him. We are not allowed to oppress him. We are not allowed to injure him. We are not allowed to destroy him. We are not allowed to kill him. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Give them their rights. Then there is the combatant enemy. The one who always, always trying to kill you. He's always trying to fight you. He's always trying to attack you. With that person, strike terror and fear into their hearts. To prevent them from attacking you. To prevent them from causing a bloodshed on you. It's kind of like you're walking in the alley and there's a guy on the other side of the alley and he looks like he wants to punch you. So what do you do? You take out a weapon and you put it by your chest and you make sure it's visible. You're not going to use it on him, but you're doing it like this to let him know if you're trying to attack me, I got something waiting for you. So you struck fear into his heart before he thinks twice about attacking you. That is allowed. In other words, a preemptive strike or a preemptive uh, stance to make them think twice about attacking you, to prevent them from attacking you. Okay. But to just take a, a gun or a knife and wave it every time I see any Christian, any Jew, to people walking in the streets minding their own business, and I just take out a gun to wave it in front of every one of them? No. The, 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 that's not what Islam is talking about. That's not 
what Islam is talking about. Okay. So, by definition of terrorism, to strike fear and terror into the hearts of the enemy. By that definition, isn't Obama a terrorist? By that definition, isn't Obama a terrorist? Isn't he striking fear and terror into the hearts of the Muslims in Palestine and Syria and Afghanistan and Iraq? And the list goes on and on with the U.S. drones landing on those countries and bombing those countries. Innocent Muslim women and children getting killed in those countries by U.S. drones. By that definition, isn't Obama a terrorist? By that definition, isn't Ben Netanyahu a terrorist? Ben Netanyahu, who collects the weapons that say made in USA, he collects weapons that say made in USA, he collects them from Obama, and he uses those same weapons to kill Muslims in Palestine. By that definition, isn't Ben Netanyahu a terrorist? The answer is yes. Tony Blair, who allies the NATO, NATO forces to bomb Muslims in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria and other Muslim countries. By that definition, isn't Tony Blair a terrorist? Yes. So when we realize who the terrorist is, then how can we start crying cats and dogs when the Muslims in those countries defend themselves? If there was a whole bunch of Muslim countries allying together, to attack America for no reason, you would say, oh, hey, you know, this is terrorism. But when America allies with NATO and other countries to attack Muslim countries under the so-called pretext of a war on terror, then you call them freedom fighters. No. When America and its allies ally together to bomb Muslim countries, that's not attacking terrorists. That's them being the terrorists. So once we define who the terrorist is, then we can see who are the freedom fighters. So the freedom fighters are the Muslims defending their lands from, from uh, Palestine to the mountains of Afghanistan. Who's the terrorist? The American regime and their allies who are bombing Muslims. Who's the freedom fighters? The Muslims in the Muslim countries who are defending themselves. Now that doesn't mean, and I said this before, it doesn't mean a Muslim, if he uh, kills a woman and children for no reason, then uh, he's exempted, he's absolved. No, that's unacceptable. A Muslim uh, blows up a building that has nothing but innocent people in there? No, that's unacceptable, that, that's un-Islamic. A Muslim uh, bombs a church and a synagogue for no reason? That's un-Islamic, un-Islamic. A Muslim beheading a journalist? A Muslim beheading, beheading a, a journalist for no reason? No, that's un-Islamic. A Muslim targeting non-combatants for no reason? Un-Islamic. A Muslim targeting the old, the handicapped, the senile? That's un-Islamic. A Muslim destroying churches or uh, 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 crops and trees and destroying the harvest? That's un-Islamic. So a Muslim defending himself also has its limits. I can defend myself. It doesn't mean I go destroy every house I see and every church I see and every synagogue I tree, synagogue I, I see. I'm sorry. So a Muslim defending himself from people who have bombed Muslim countries is a different scenario from a Muslim targeting innocent people for no just cause. So a Muslim should uh, should not condemn the Mujahideen who are defending their lands. But at the same time, a Muslim should also not support terrorism. There's a fine line between a Muslim verbally keeping quiet when the Mujahideen are defending their lands. We should not insult the Mujahideen. The Muslim should never insult the Mujahideen. But, but, if a Muslim does acts of terrorism, a Muslim should condemn that. A Muslim should not support terrorism terrorism either. As Islam condemns terrorism, I condemn ter terrorism and every time the canary should condemn terrorism. No one should support terrorism. The only one who supports terrorism is someone who needs a psychologist. Thank you and have a great day.